evening and welcome to Match of the Day 2. Five games to bring you from a busy Sunday in the Premier League. Danny Murphy and Shea Given are with us. And we begin at Old Trafford with the Manchester derby. Commentary comes from Guy Mowbray. Two weeks from today, it will be 142 years since the first meeting of the clubs that would grow into these giants of the game. Before kickoff of the first derby since his passing, all inside Old Trafford, red and blue, will pay tribute to another true giant, Sir Bobby Charlton. The Manchester United lineup shows three changes from Tuesday against FC Copenhagen, with two coming at the back as Rafa Varane and Sergio Reguilon are replaced by Victor Lindelof and Johnny Evans for his first Manchester derby since December 2012. The other alteration sees Christian Eriksen come in for Anthony, with Casemiro once again ruled out by an ankle injury. For City, six changes from Wednesday at Young Boys in Switzerland, with the two biggest questions coming on their left-hand side, where Josko Gvardiol has been preferred to Nathan Ake and Jack Grealish to Jeremy Doku. Possession first, more power and pace saved for later on. So Bobby Charlton played in 27 Manchester derbies in a time of success for both clubs. And when jewels on the field were more than matched by great respect and friendship off it. Former teammates and opponents of Sir Bobby will now lead a minute's applause to celebrate the life of one of England's greatest ever players and ambassadors, a man who transcended football rivalries. For the 191st time, Manchester is locked in football battle on the field. We've already passed the threshold. As last October, Haaland and Foden are the derby destroyers for Manchester City. Uh, there's quite a lot to get into from that game. Obviously, let's start with the penalty incident. And one of the reasons VAR sent the referee to the screen is the path of the ball and the belief that Rodri would have got to it. Mm -hmm. The only thing about it is, is we see a lot of them sort of pull backs in the box. They go on, they go unnoticed, they go unpunished. We'll have a look at the one today. We, we... Dominant. Eric Ten Hag said he thought United did well in the first half and defended well. But I think you think that they made it easy for City. Well, City's players have such wonderful game intelligence and tactical know-how. You know, you've got to be perfect a lot of the time to stop this City side. And just to highlight the dominance, the expected goals for City today was four, which is the second highest expected goals this season. The only one had Brighton at home to promote Luton on the first day of the season. Mm. Even, even Newcastle, when they hit eight, only had an expected goals of 3.9. Do you, know, do you know what? I don't think there's enough repercussions for the players who don't do the work. <laughs> uh, Aston Villa were looking to make it 12 home league wins in a row when they took on Luton. Your commentator for this one, Simon Brotherton. Villa's tally of 19 points at this stage is their best Premier League start in 25 years. And Unai Emery goes with the same starting 11 as last Sunday against West Ham. Esri Conce, Pau Torres, Moussa Diaby and Nicolo Zaniolo were all rested on the bench in the Conference League on Thursday, but returned this afternoon. Luton secured a comeback point at Forest last week and haven't lost by more than a single goal since the second match day. They make three changes for this one. There's a first appearance of the season for Gabriel Osho and starts two for Ross Barkley and Issa Kabore. Marvellous Nakamba makes his first return to Villa Park since leaving for Luton in January. Villa scoring freely and often in the opening weeks of the season scoring three or more in each of the opening four home league matches for the first time in over 100 years, 1920 the last time. Another three goals, another three points. It's 12 home league wins in a row for Aston Villa. 
Well, I'm assuming they cover set pieces in those hour and a half long meetings, don't they? Because their set pieces are paying off for them. It goes down as an own goal, but he's so quick. He's, he's just so, dry. He's so powerful. It? I mean, they paid 52 million for him. He's 24 years of age. He's got 10 France international caps. He's a he's a top player and and, and, a, and a huge future ahead of him. And that's a that's a great start, isn't it? If you're a Villa fan, what a start that is. <laughs> Up next, Liverpool against Nottingham Forest. Martin Fisher, watch this one. Not a happy hunting ground for Forrest. Even the great Brian Clough couldn't get a win for them here. But then again, Anfield is such a fortress these days. Their last Premier League defeat here was a year ago today. Jurgen Klopp's plans affected by the shocking news regarding Luis Diaz and reports that his parents had been kidnapped in Colombia. Darwin Nunes comes in, the only change from the side that beat Everton in the derby. Yet another injury blow for Forrest. After his brace against Luton, Chris Wood picked up a groin strain in training, so no recognised striker for Steve Cooper. Instead, he goes with a back five, with Musa Niakate and Ola Aida both returning. Liverpool's 1200th Premier League game, their first back in August 1992, was a 1-0 defeat to Nottingham Forest. They stay very much in touch with those at the top end of the Premier League table. Liverpool 3, Nottingham Forest 0. Uh, just the latest on uh, Luis Diaz's parents. Uh, his mother was found uh, safe on Saturday. However, uh, there is still a military and police search underway in Colombia to try and find Luis Diaz's father. Um, as far as the football was concerned at Anfield. There's a there's a real triangle developing down Liverpool's right. Uh, right on to the London Stadium with Everton going to West Ham to play their first game since the death of their chairman, Bill Kenwright. Commentary on this one from Mark Scott. After naming the same side in their last five league games, David Moyes makes two changes. Aaron Cresswell and Mohamed Kudos come in for the bench, Socek and suspended Emerson. Everton are also missing a defender due to suspension, with Ashley Young unavailable after his red in the Merseyside derby. Nathan Patterson replaces him. Dominic Calvert-Lewin needs one more goal to hit 50 in the Premier League. And the five he's scored in all competitions against West Ham is the joint most he's managed against any club. Bill Kenwright, a very a emotional day for here. all connected Spending with Everton and for David Moyes. Bill Kenwright was instrumental in his appointment as Everton boss in 2002, ahead of his stellar 11-year spell in charge at Goodison Park. He says in his programme notes today, Bill was a wonderful man, a gentleman of the game, and in time he hopes he'll be able to let everyone know how important he was to him. The tribute here to Sir Bobby Charlton has additional poignancy as well, with Sir Jeff Hurst now the sole surviving member of the England team that won the 1966 World Cup amongst those in attendance. Walprouse picking out Paqueta. Lovely touch, and that's not bad either. Paqueta! Oh! And that might well be enough to ensure Everton leave with all three points. Yeah, they've had a tough week, and it was a good win for them. F founded on a central defensive partnership that, that could be a platform for them for the future. Yeah, if you look at their start overall, they've had a really tough opening 10 games. A lot of those games against the top six, seven teams from last year. So I think they, um, they, they can be disappointed, but not, uh, not worried. I think uh, there's lots of positives for West Ham. The signings are good. They're playing in Europe, let's not forget. You know, uh, Right. Uh, in six Premier League meetings between the two sides, Brighton are yet to get the better of Fulham. Steve Wilson was at this one. Brighton's win over Ajax here on Thursday was their first ever in Europe and their first in six games in all competitions, whilst Fulham haven't won away since the opening day of the season at Everton. Roberto De Zerbi is without March, Estupinian, Welbeck and Lamptey. In come Adam Webster, Mahmoud Dahoud, Adam Lalana for only his second start of the season and Evan Ferguson. Pascal Gross is playing his 200th Premier League game. 
Marco Silva has signed a new contract to stay at Fulham until 2026. He makes three changes. Harrison Reed, Alex Awobi and Raul Jimenez replacing Sasa Lukic, Andreas Pereira and Carlos Vinicius. A win today for Brighton would take them above Newcastle in the Premier League table with 10 played. And it's all square at the Amex. Brighton won, Fulham won. I mean, that's a fair point from him, in that if the ref saw it, the assistant saw it, and VAL saw it, and nobody did anything, then is there a case to answer? But is he lucky? Yeah, I think he's very lucky. I, I think. But overall, I think it's a strength of Brighton to do what they're doing. It's, it's what makes them a special team at the moment. Only the bottom four have conceded more goals this season. Brighton themselves have, have scored and conceded in each of their last 14 Premier League games. So, I mean, it, it benefits them at the other end of the field. It does, yeah. I mean, I think the Zerbi after the game will say, I want you to do that next week again. Steal mm -hmm. the goalkeeper, tell him to keep passing the midfield and playing out from the back. But... Uh, too good, too bad on the way. First, here's the rest of the weekend's action. Here is the Premier League table. Manchester City's derby successless and back to within two points of leaders. Tottenham wins for Liverpool and Villa helps them keep pace. Everton's victory gives them a five-point buffer above the bottom three. Five points from their first ten matches is Luton's worst ever start to a season in league football. Here's too good, too bad. The skills that didn't quite go to plan over the weekend included this... Shot, maybe, from <laughs> Gustavo Hamer for Sheffield United. Murphy Lake. Murphy Lake. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And the overhead kick from Lucas Pacatar at West Ham. The skills that did come off over the weekend, Morgan Gibbs-White for Nottingham Forest. Taking three players out. And Phil Foden for Manchester oh. City in the derby. Touch. Obviously, there's nothing funnier than seeing a goalkeeper fall over when trying to get rid of the ball. Matt Turner is the show. No, Give him no. no. <laughs> Matt Turner for Nottingham. <laughs> and Kaminsky for Luton. Perfect housery from Neil Mopai at Brentford at Chelsea. Every week he gets involved in something. And also, it can be very, very unfortunate for goalkeepers when the ball comes back off the woodwork and into the back of the net. Emmy Martinez there, really unfortunate, isn't it, Shay? Oh, not again, not this. <laughs> it's a finish, this. <laughs> we lost that game 1-0. I tell you what, you didn't half have some wet look gel on as well. <laughs> look at that! We lost 1-0, headline the next day, giving hands game to Everton. But harsh, isn't it? Very was hard. A bit. <laughs> yeah. Uh, right then, thank you very much to Danny and to Shay. Pep Guardiola now has five wins at Old Trafford in the Premier League. That's two more than anyone else has managed. Good night. Does his side enjoy their work? Once again, the city is blue.